Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be showing you some more coloring and also a card made with the new watercoloring coloring sheets from Simon Says Stamp. These are super fun sheets that have a design printed on watercolor paper. And then they also have four little sample dots of Daniel Smith watercolor. So you don't need uh, additional watercolor palettes or anything like that. You can color directly from this sheet just with a damp paintbrush. So here are all of the designs. These all happen to be either background stamps or stencil designs. <clears throat> excuse me, that I have designed for Simon over the last couple of years. So there are actually um, products with these same designs just in different sizes. So I'll try to link to those down below as well if you're interested in having a design like this but you don't want it on a watercoloring sheet. You instead want it as a background stamp or as a stencil or something like that. So I'll link to those down below as well. So today's video <clears throat> Excuse me, I must have something caught in my throat. Um, today's video is basically showing you a little more of the watercoloring that I um, did in, I think it was a, a video a couple weeks ago, one where I was actually in California and at the Lawn Fawn headquarters and I did some watercoloring while I was there at an event and I just, you know, set my camera up and just painted away and I had music playing. So I didn't really talk much about the actual watercoloring on the watercolor sheet. So I wanted to show you a little bit of that today. So it's off screen, unfortunately, so you can't really see, but I am picking up color from those sample dots that are at the top of the sheet. And the one thing you wanna remember with these is you wanna make sure that you can extend the use of that color to the entire design that's on the watercolor sheet. So you don't want to use super, super strong color or waste any pigment while you're painting. You want to make sure you can really stretch that watercolor out. So I like to make sure that if I pick up color on my brush and I've kind of filled an area and I'm done with that area, I try to move on to a second area that I want to have that same color in so that I don't waste any of the color on my paintbrush. The other thing I'm doing is I'm making sure that I kind of mix colors together and I use kind of a lighter wash of color first and then I can go back and intensify the color if I need it later. Um, this is you know, a regular idea when it comes to watercolor in that you always wanna start light and then build up that contrast. But this works especially well when you're trying to conserve pigment and you don't want to use too much at first and kind of waste any pigment if that makes sense. So I went around this entire area and the water coloring actually took over an hour just to paint one half of this design. So some of these more intricate designs like this can be quite time consuming. It's great if you really love that coloring trend because it keeps your mind occupied and your motor skills going um, for an extended period of time. With that being said, I decided to only paint half of the design today because I was planning to uh, make it into a card. And the card design that I was planning, I didn't need a full sheet. But if you wanted to use this full design, it has plenty of room. It's sized perfectly so that you can cut it down and the entire front of your card could be one of these watercoloring sheets. Um, I think. Uh, the actual size is about five inches wide by I think maybe six inches tall, somewhere around there. Uh, don't quote me on that, That's, I'm probably wrong. But there's plenty of room if you wanted to use the entire design on your card front. So when I was done painting half of my design here, I went ahead and cut this down. Now, if I have been thinking ahead, I would have painted the bottom portion of the card because then I could have kept those watercolor dots uh, attached to the uncolored portion, but I wasn't really thinking ahead that far. So I will just save that little sheet of the watercolor samples and maybe paper clip it to the other half of that design so that I can continue painting in those colors. 
The card base I'm using today is made out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. I just scored that at five and a half to create a side folding card. And now I'm using this die set from Simon. This is another design that I did for Simon. Um, this is some of my own lettering and it has the main word and then also a shadow. And I cut the shadow out of some vellum and the main word out of some uh, onyx, or not onyx black, this is just um, licorice twist cardstock from Basil. So after those were cut, I adhered them together using some Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue, and I just have a quilt precision tip um, on this glue. I actually transferred the glue to the, to the bottle this time. And I just used some tweezers to help get that in place. And then I set that aside to dry for a minute while I work on the rest of the greeting area. I'm going to use my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool to stamp the rest of the greeting. And I'm using the Big Thanks Words stamp set that coordinates with that die. Um, just so you know that that top thanks that's really large on the stamp set is actually the same exact size as the die. So if you wanted to die cut the shadow and then stamp on the shadow die cut, you definitely could if you wanted to use it in that way. So I'm stamping onto some more of that Licorice Twist cardstock from Basil, and I stamped that in Versamark ink and then sprinkled on some Alabaster White Embossing Powder from Brutus Monroe. Heat set that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted, and then trimmed it down to a narrow strip to go on my card. I put that strip on some foam adhesive that I cut down so it was more narrow, and then place that in the bottom center area of my card. Using that same adhesive again to adhere the large thanks to my card. And for any areas that are sort of popping up that don't really stick all the way down, you can just put a little bit of adhesive right under that area. I like this kind of quilt precision bottle for that because it's nice and small and I can get some adhesive in there without having too much come out. So because I cut down my background, it wasn't centered on my card front, and I did it on purpose like this so it was to the bottom of the card so that I could trim off about half an inch, a little less than half an inch, off the top of the card. And that sort of centers everything in the card design. The last thing I'm going to do is add some glossy accents over the top of the large thanks die cut. Um, I want to make sure that I don't go off the edge or if I don't, you know, have any bubbles or air pockets in my bottle. So I'm testing it out on some scratch paper. This is just the remaining vellum from die cutting that shadow background. And I'm going to very carefully squeeze some of this glossy accents out onto the top of this black die cut. And this gives us some good dimension and a lot of shine. It makes the word really stand out. Now it looks a little bit cloudy right now because it hasn't dried, but as it dries, it will become completely clear and it'll just give that black cardstock a really nice glossy finish. So that is the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And this also gives you an idea for what to do with the backgrounds you might create, not just these watercoloring sheets. You could use this idea with lots of backgrounds you create with a million techniques. Thanks so much for watching today. I will be back on Wednesday with a brand new card video.